Hello my soccer universe, I would say let's finish the weekend reviews in the Premier League and in the Eredivisie um, where to be honest I'm losing a little bit of interest in these two leagues. Uh, Eredivisie is more or less you know the title is gone and in the Premier League yes we are we are getting back to a top four race so I think some excitement is, com is coming up has just been that the fixtures uh, as of late there was none that is standout and even if there are two big names playing you always expect a bad game so there's kind of my interest for the Premier League a little bit waning at the moment but you know it's at the beginning of, of the season I barely watched La Liga and now I cannot get enough of La Liga and you know it comes and goes in a way. Uh, headlines before we go in I think we could have had a pretty decisive moment in the relegation battle and that's why I am wearing Newcastle so I'm having all my Premier League teams out here uh, with Newcastle winning away from home and Fulham losing at home so uh, it's now six points we had a pretty big surprise with Leeds beating City 2-1 uh, despite playing a whole half with a man down and yes, uh, with West Ham getting another 3-0 lead and almost throwing that, that out of my way, that's one story, but uh, they get another win over Leicester and now it is very, very, very tight and there are arguably at least four teams vying for the two remaining spots in the Champions League and I think that is kind of exciting, although I gut feeling tells me that probably the two big boys will manage to get in there. And yeah, as I said, in the Eredivisie, Ajax, I think they're within Epsilon of the champ championship. I think they need two more wins, one for sure, but I think uh, two, two, two more wins and it's all done. Um, and yeah, not much more. So let's go. I, as I said, I saw a few things live, but mostly highlights. Didn't see anything of, I mean, I saw highlights of uh, Fulham Wolves. Uh, not a great game. Uh, and, uh, William Jose had a goal disallowed for one of those fractional offsides. Um, and then everything is seemingly going for a nil nil draw when Adama Traore unleashes a shot. I think his first goal in a long time uh, from the outside and it goes in, in, in the internet. Honestly, um, Google could, should have this one. And so in stoppage time, it's 1 0 Wolves and Fulham. This is, was a shocker. Shocker also kind of what leads it to City, but it has to be said City, they're aware it's all about the Champions League now. They have such a huge, huge lead. We can rest some players, so they were not really playing a full string squad. And it kind of showed, and um, one could say maybe Guardiola admires Biasa so much that he kind of gave him this gift, but I really think they were they looking out for, for themselves. And uh, City, you know, uh, controlled the game, had a little bit more, but out of nowhere, Bamford plays the ball to Dallas, who via the inside of the post puts it into the net um, to yeah, a surprising lead. Uh, and then Cooper is sent, sent off for a rather rough challenge. I mean, had to be looked with VAR. And so Leeds has to play the entire second half with 10 men. And you really wondered, yeah, how much is City gonna do it, uh, win by now? But they need some time to get back into the game. They bring on Gundogan, they bring on Foden, and then uh, Bernardo Silva plays it to Ferran Torres, who can get the e equalizer. And um, they were actually then pushing to get the win. However, the win falls to Leeds, who are uh, playing the typical style. And Dallas. Uh, runs to goal and pull it in uh, in stoppage time was a rather it was a little bit of a shock moment but if you think about the circumstances maybe not so much um, almost a shock moment although it shouldn't be is that Liverpool won against Aston Villa and they won late so finally they can get something at Anfield they have now scored four goals at Anfield in the entire year of 21 which they probably will need to do uh, on the, in the Champions League against the Real Madrid. They need at least two. Probably they will need a, f uh, a few more. Oli Watkins giving us as as will the early, early lead and a uh, goal by Firmino is disallowed. Mo Salah gets the equalizer um, at that point. Liverpool try to put forward, but Aston Villa always dangerous. And very very late, it's a shot by Trent Alexander Arnold, the guy who has been kind of. I, I, I know ever since he didn't get called for, for the English team, everyone tries to beat up on him or talks about him, whether he's great or whether he's bad. 
uh, it will help soothe his soul a little bit to get a winner for Liverpool. Maybe Liverpool's monkey is a little bit off the back now. They can win at Anfield again. Um, Chelsea almost did to Crystal Palace what Crystal Palace has been done to in uh, around Christmas, the last time that Liverpool really looked like champions when they won 7 0 there. And it was Kai Havertz uh, who uh, really shows his form. And I am really thinking about making a video about top 10 things that uh, bug me in soccer slash football. Uh, and it's mainly that one of those things that, that bug me, you get a new player who comes injured, who gets COVID, and everyone thinks it's the worst signing of all time. Please, can we stop with this short term mission and just give players time to integrate? Kai Havertz has been great in the Bundesliga, and I'm in no way, I, you know, I have no stake with him. I, I neither like him or dislike like him. I just saw he is a big talent, and you gotta give those players time. And if it's a season, it's a season. Uh, you can, after two years, I, th I think a new player should be judged in many ways. But, you know, it's short-term thinking. Just what drives me mad, the same thing goes for co coaches. But this will be a video. Havertz actually gets the first one. Um, very nicely played goal. And also the second one, uh, the way he goes to pull his position. After 10 minutes, it's 2-0. Kurt Zuma uh, pull, pulls in one. Bentege pulls one back. And Pulisic adds a second one. And Chelsea look, you know, last week, yes, this was after the international break. I, I could cool and stand, so they needed to bounce back a little bit. They did so in the Champions League. I think Chelsea looks actually quite dangerous. And let's just assume for a second that Chelsea will play Real Madrid in the semifinals. That is a very intriguing ma ma match because those are two teams that you never thought that they could get somewhere. But I think both of them are very well capable of winning this Champions League. Now, since I'm very Newcastle, we better talk about Burnley again against Newcastle. Um, the goal for Burnley in the 18th through Vidra was uh, typically slapstick, not slapstick defending, but uh, poor defending. Where everyone uh, focuses on Chris Wood and Vidra is uh, clear and he can't, can't put in. But in the second half, Sam Maxima comes on and totally turns the game, game around. First, he assists Murphy in the 59th and then is uh, assisted by Shelby running uh, freely and really scoring a nice winner for Newcastle. It could have been maybe even three. Uh, Newcastle getting a big win, as, as we'll see. This gives them now quite some cushion in the relegation battle. And you don't have to rely on this last game against Fulham if you can keep that. That's always uh, the big caveat. West Ham makes the art form of having a 3-0 lead and almost squandering very popular at the moment. I mean, they did this now 3 3 and throw. Jesse Lingard, definitely the player at the moment. He scores two uh, and uh, he scores more and more goals than I think he ever had in his uh, in his Premier League uh, career. He gets the first two in the first half. It's 2-0 right after have Bowen, after Suchik assist. Makes it 3-0 and you think West Ham is cruising to a win. No, when it's 3-0, West Ham is not cruising. They even have half a goal uh, disallowed. Ian Nacho in the 70th puts from back and then in stoppage time makes it 3-2. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe West Ham still rolling. And what this means is that Leicester now uh, has to, you know, losing to Man City, losing now to West Ham. And you suddenly look a little bit more down and you have kind of these thoughts in the back of your mind. What happened last season when you just squandered a very comfortable lead? And it back then, as it is now, it's injuries. West Ham, um, this would be the fairy tale story of the, of, of the season. One that could uh, I would very much be backing in many ways. Uh, Steve Harris will be happy about it, of course, but I do uh, have, to have to say I don't quite believe it yet, but it would be a great story if they can make it into the Champions League just to change things up. Spurs against United. I think the biggest thing was the, in the 35th minute when I think it was McTominay pulls, uh, you know, there is a human song and Mc McTominay uh, wrestling for the ball. The McTominay gets, gets the ball, tries to get rid of McTominay and kind of, I don't know how hard he hits him in his face. Son goes down and directly from that, uh, the ball goes to uh, Pogba, who plays a really nice pass to Cavani, makes it 1-0. Um, great goal, to be honest, but then it goes back to VAR and the referee decides, yeah, this was a foul, the whatever touch it was. I hear now arguments in all directions, I, and it's funny that most of the English pundits say it was definitely not a foul. 
And most of the German pilots said, yeah, this was a clear foul. And even more so, if this is a foul, it needs to be second red card for a uh, second yellow card for McTominay. And he's sent off. <sighs> I actually think the referee overall got, got, got it right. Although I, he probably could have let, let, let it go as well. But um, I, I thought, yeah, with that, he, it, it has a definitely a kicking motion in, in there, so I can see what the ref saw. But maybe this looked far worse in uh, slow motion than it w w w probably looked in reality. And yeah, Son probably sold it well, and there was a little bit of bust up at the, between the co coaches at the press conference afterwards as well, which I don't want to get in. Speaking of Son, I have to say the goals, goal that he played, Kane, uh, Lucas Moura, and onto Son. That was a really nicely played goal to give Spurs the lead. However, it was United who were the better team that day. Um, and especially Pogba took the game uh, on his shoulders. The equalizer comes through Fred. Then um, uh, Greenwood assists Cavani, who with a diving header gets in and Pogba again to Greenwood. Uh, deep in Sobesha makes it 3-1 comfortable win for uh, Spurs. Arsenal also uh, for United. Arsenal also gets a comfortable win at Sheffield and yesterday West Brom over Southampton 3-0 that West Brom is getting used to winning by big score lines and Brighton and Everton only make it a goalless draw which uh, sets now the table it is all about the race for the Champions League where at the moment Leicester and Liverpool are the favorites according to the model over West Ham and Chelsea it is very tight. There are only four points. It's a little bit like the Serie A chase with less spots available. So uh, rather, rather tight. It's only the, you know, the Manchester teams that are kind of safe in there. And yeah, you know, the romantic in, in, in me would say, okay, the current total four, I would love. But then on the, on, on the other side, what would be a Champions League without Chelsea and Liverpool? So... Wait, I think Spurs is out. Everton also has not no no chance even if, if, if with the game in hand. And on the bottom, uh, yeah, this was this potentially was a big blow for four for them. Now the six point lead of New Newcastle might see Newcastle be safe. We have a few games in hand, which would mean since Everton has to still play Aston Villa, um, those two teams would uh, go over the North Lund 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 teams at the moment. Uh, but you know. Nothing really big or remarkable there. Uh, and expected standings, as I said, uh, it's Leicester and Liverpool uh, ahead of Chelsea and West Ham. But you see how tight it is, 67, 67, 66, 66 on average. Um, so it could go really e e either way. And if you just look at the green jetting, it's all so very much the same that this is a definite battle. That, yeah, probably excites me. I would have loved if there is Spurs all, all in there to make it a little bit more e exciting. And on the bottom, it's pretty clear. So, yeah. Uh, on the, uh, so we have the upcoming round is a very stretched round, uh, basically because of the FA Cup uh, semifinals uh, between Chelsea and City and Leicester and Southampton. And then in the league we have um, Spurs uh, uh, play at Ever Everton already on Friday. And on, on the weekend, I mean, there's not really an uh, outstanding game. Southampton Crystal Palace has been postponed for now. Maybe a Monday leads against Liverpool. That's a fun game. And then all the other teams that are in the semi finals play then uh, midweek. So, yeah, it's all stretched out. All stretched out there. Let's move on to the Eredivisie. Uh, where I think the only thing, I, I mean, all the big boys won. Uh, maybe with Vitesse, who have been up there, but, you know, uh, I think it's now at that uh, PSV, Feyenoord and Ajax. Ajax getting the win over Valweig. Uh, the goal by Haller, yeah, we would have needed it in the Europa League. Ajax, I, will, I would say, was very artistic the way he stretches up. So, uh, giving Ajax a win and they have a game in hand which will be played soon. You see already 11 points with all, with six games to go. Looks very much clear. Ajax, uh, it's only between PSV and AZ for the Champions League spot. This is actually tight and we will see that. And then you have the Europa League or Conference League playoff. No, I uh, don't know how this will pan out. Um, PSV is slightly favored over Ad, Ad and Feyenoord probably getting this one fixed spot. Um, we have on the next, next weekend, there's no nothing being played in the early weeks. We have the cup final between Ajax and Vitesse. So we'll see if 
Ajax wins another title. Probably, although if Vitesse wins, it would also be fun because uh, to see someone else winning for a change. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more, please fill me in if there's anything I have missed uh, on both leagues. As I said, I have not watched very exclusively, but at least I saw highlights of all the weekend games, not the Monday games in the Premier League, so that's at least something. And I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!